Hi, this is Kathy. Welcome to Craft with Kathy. Get comfy, grab something to drink. I got a cute little project for tonight. Make it an adorable little sign. That is pretty much evergreen. You can display it all year round. And I think it serves as a little reminder for us in some ways. I'm just getting myself straightened out and I realize that things are a little bit crooked here. Let's see if I can straighten it out a teensy bit. And hopefully not go the wrong direction. How do you like that? I picked up more of the laptop that I didn't need to do. <clears throat> okay. Um, coming at you live from the suburbs west of Chicago, where, like everyone else or everybody in the next couple days, we've basically gotten bombarded with a bunch of snow. And, and I'm trying to figure out what I've got a shadow from and what I'm actually seeing here because there is nothing here. Am I picking up my base? Maybe I'm just picking up the base. That's strange. I guess that's what I'm doing. Drop me a line. Let me know where you're viewing from. Say hello. I'm going to start out with my very grateful project on an Aiden board that I did a number of months ago. I thought it was perfect for Thanksgiving and I loved it. I thought it was beautiful. But <clears throat> I think it's time to reuse the frame and get ready for springtime and <sighs> when all this white stuff melts, if that makes any sense. So I'm going to give this a little spritz of water so that I can remove the chalk paste that I had previously done on here. And I'm also, being that this has kind of been sitting in a corner for a while, kind of clean off my frame a little bit. This is a distressed frame. It's our Aiden board. It is a porcelain board, porcelain magnetic board with a 50 year warranty. So it's a beautiful, beautiful surface to chalk on. And obviously reusable. Hi, Bonnie. How you doing? Hey, did you guys get any snow or did it, did it pass you up? Maybe a little bit too south for you? We've got about 10 inches of snow and the roads are terrible here. And whatever. I mean, it's winter. It's the Chicago suburbs. I should be used to it, right? So I'm just using my um, paste scraper to remove most of the paste off of this board. I just spritzed it with a little water. Generally, you let it set about three minutes. I know I'm being a little bit anxious here and diving into this right away, but I want to get on to the fun stuff. I've got some ideas. They're not fully developed for what I want to do with this transfer. So we'll kind of see how it goes. I, us I like usually having a better, um, a more fully formed concept in my mind before I start a project. But I have to admit, I knew this is what I was going to be working on tonight. And I was just kind of cruising around, looking for ideas, kind of thinking of other things. And I kind of lost track of time. And I said, oh my goodness, it's not really 20 minutes to 9, is it? Yeah, it was. I'm like, seriously, I lost track of time. I think I lost a good hour somewhere. Just kind of poking around on the internet, which, you know, it can be an, an, a time vampire, can't it? Okay, and to get rid of any little ghosting and any residual paste, I'm going to use a board eraser. This has been around a bit. I'm just going to spritz it with a little bit of water. And our board eraser is named as such because it's great for cleaning our boards. getting all, any residual ghosting or leftover paste off the boards. And then I'm going to use 
the microfiber side of our fuzzing cloth. One side is teary that we use for fuzzing, the other is microfiber. The microfiber is great for cleaning off your board and drying it so that there aren't any streaks or anything. And I just knocked all my squeegees and things on the floor. <gasps> it's been that kind of day, what could I say? I didn't get much sleep the last two nights either, so that hasn't helped anything at all. Oh my goodness, but you can see how quick and easily this cleans up. And is ready for another use. How easy was that? One way to save money and save storage space, if you don't have to use multiple boards, just reuse them. Oh, you're lucky it went south. I was hoping it would go a little bit south of us, and I guess the worst of it did, but uh, it could have gone a couple, you know, another 50 miles further south would have made things much easier today. Anyway, can't really do anything about the weather, right? So what I want to use on this board as soon as I find it, because I've obviously misplaced it. It's a new transfer. I truly have misplaced it. Okay, this isn't funny. We kind of we're moving a bunch of fuzzing towels and things around here and somewhere I misplaced the transfer. Seriously, this is crazy. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is like big time embarrassing. Oh, geez, right here. I have these little flip top cabinets. Um, I'm in the kitchen instead of my craft room. I'm still working out of the craft room. We have to get back in there. But I have these little flip top cabinets. They're actually trones and they're supposed to be for, um, for shoes. But I found that they're a great place to put um, odds and ends. In, in my house, I actually had them for scarves and um, mittens and things like that by the doorway, the entry, entryway. And I talked my dad into putting him in this little tiny wall in the kitchen over here just for the odds and ends for his medicine and mom's medicine and nebulizer and all that kind of thing. And I just stuck it up against it and didn't even see it. Anyway, this is the transfer called Take the Long Way Home. And that song's been running through my mind all day. This is February's Club Couture transfer. It's exclusive to club members and to designers. And I just thought it's a very nice design. The frame can be used to actually frame a photo or use on, um, on a border in a photograph. The bicycle, I think, is a little whimsical I, with the little, I think there's stars there coming out of the basket. I think that looks kind of fun. And then take the long way home, um, find joy in the journey, just kind of really fits. I think sometimes we get caught up in a day-to-day, everyday grind, and we forget to take the long way home once in a while, have some fun. So, hence, this is what I'm going to do with this transfer. Like I said, my idea isn't fully formed. I have some of my colors that I know what I want, and I know what look I want for my words but I don't know if I'm going to be able to achieve it. So we'll see. If not, and I don't like it, then all I have to do is erase the part I don't like and redo it with a different color, or colors as the case may be. So very simple and easy when you're using chalk paste, and I do mean paste. Our paste is made from chalk. It is not chalk paint. It is chalk paste, and it's water-soluble. And as you can see, obviously very easy to remove. So I'm gonna grab a fuzzing towel here and fuzz this transfer. It's a brand new transfer. And by fuzzing, 
I mean, I'm going to deliberately apply lint from the terry cloth side of this transfer to the back of, I'm um, from the fuzzing cloth, to the back of the transfer because our transfers are made of vinyl, which is a teal, silk screen, which is like a mesh that goes through the whole transfer, and you can see through to its white backer, and they are adhesive backed, which makes them really easy to reuse and to position. And we get crisp, beautiful images without, with very rarely any bleeds. Notice that the carrier sheet has one side that's glossy like freezer paper. The glossy side goes up against the sticky side of the transfer. The other side is dull. So I like labeling the flip side so that I don't accidentally ever put it together the wrong way. So I just generally use um, a permanent marker and write the name on the back. I could just write the word back on it but I like if I'm using multiple transfers to actually have the backs labeled to what they are so I'm going to deliberately apply a little bit of fuzz here which makes my transfer not quite as sticky and you might wonder why would you want to do that well I want to diminish the adhesiveness anytime I'm using it on a non-porous or very very smooth surface your, our transfers can be used on chalkboard, dry erase board, wood, metal, glass, mirror, ceramics, cloth, fabric, canvas, just about anything, windows. And anytime you're putting on an ultra smooth surface or non porous surface like mirror or metal or uh, a window or um, any kind of glass, you want to fuzz it a little bit more than you would otherwise. Generally, if I was just doing this on our regular chalkboards, um, I would probably fuzz it three times. Being that I'm putting this on our porcelain, which is a very, very smooth chalkboard, our premium chalkboards, I'm going to fuzz it five times because it will stick very strongly to that board. So the idea is when I'm done chalking it, I don't want to have to struggle lifting it up. I don't want to have to pull or tug because... Like I said, our transfers are made of, they're like, I think of them as like a fabric. And if I pulled or tugged or stretched on it, I could potentially stretch it. But really, it's not big of a, a big deal. Here's all you have to do. Don't pull or tug when you lift. Lift from the top, the bottom, the left, or the right. Don't ever pull on or tug on a corner. And that's pretty much it. And I'm just gently running my fingers over, pressing it very, very lightly but also feeling to make sure that I don't have any air bubbles underneath my silk screen. If so, I would lift it up and remove the air bubble, but I don't feel anything. Sometimes it's easier to feel than to actually see it. And the reason you don't want a, an air bubble is obviously you want the chalk to go through the silk screen onto the surface very smoothly. So that's the game plan with that. So I'm gonna use our ocean mist for the frame. It's kind of sitting on the fence between my blues for the for the bike. I'm going to use this blue for the bike. Um, I'm going to do the lines and find joy in the journey in my ocean mist, kind of in the blues. I don't know. I'm in a blue mood today. What could I say? So our chalk paste should be the consistency between yogurt and sour cream. Um, <clears throat> you always want to stir it before you start. It should hold its shape. It shouldn't be drippy, but it shouldn't be clumpy. If it's thickened up, then you want to add a little spritz of distilled water to it to thin it down. And you want to use distilled water because you don't want to take the chance that any chemicals, or I should say minerals, in um, in your tap water could, have interf could interfere with the pigments of the paste. So let's see. I'm going to do all this in the ocean mist, and I'll get started right with that. I'm going to use a little squeegee. I should have shown you the angle. Kind of wipe off the paste. Our squeegees have a little angle. And when I apply this, I'm going to use pretty much a 90 degree angle, pulling the paste or pushing the paste through the silk screen to the surface below. It goes very quickly, very easy. And like I said, if you make a mistake, just wipe it off and do it again. You don't have to use the entire transfer. If I only wanted to use part of this, I could use part of it. I am now smoothing it over, removing any lines, and taking the excess paste off. And then I'm going to actually do, 
my oops I didn't have to do all that I could have just done my line I'm gonna do the top part of the frame and then come back and do the bicycle and then I'm leaving my words in the middle for last because I'm gonna try and do something special with them and oops I went right up to the handlebar on that bike almost caught it I might have gotten it a little bit I'll have to check that out too much talking while I'm chalking here. Sometimes I get in a hurry. I'm going to turn it around and just do this little line. And then I'm going to use something that's called the paste and peel method where I lift up my transfer and check it out as I go along and make sure that my paste does not dry in the silk screen. Okay, I'm putting the excess back in my jar. No sense in wasting it. So I'm going to lift up my transfer and take a look at what I've got so far. Make sure that everything looks nice and clean and neat. And that I've got tops and bottoms of my letters. And then I'm going to just let this fall gently down again. Oops, let me pick it up and straighten it out. I want to make sure I don't get any air bubbles. And I saw a little air bubble underneath that end. Then I'm going to pick up the other side and do the same thing. Make sure I got all of my line. Whoops. And by doing this, it's called the paste and peel method. My chalk won't stick in my silk screen. If I didn't lift it, it, it depending upon how long I take to finish the project, it could actually become stuck in the silk screen. And when I lift it, it could lift up part of the paste from the surface. So this way, I don't have to worry about it, and I could take my sweet time chalking this cute little bicycle and then doing the special little technique that I'm going to use for the wording. And I'm going to straighten this out again. Notice I lifted by the corner, but I didn't tug. I just gently picked it up so that I could lay this flat because I noticed it was a little crooked. Okay, so I have... Oops, I thought I had a little multi-tool here. I guess I don't. That's kind of weird. Okay, let me get my paste and my stir stick out of my jar and cover it up so my paste doesn't dry out. Oh, yeah, all the rest of my tools, I dropped them. That's, I forgot. Oops, let me grab them. Okay, I want something that's not really dark, but I wanted something darker than my ocean mist for my blue. And where do I put my other blue paste? Oh, right here. Again, I'm gonna stir it up. I haven't used this in a while, but it looks like it's a nice consistency. And basically apply it to the bike. And then I'm going to use my multi-tool, which one end is like a small squeegee and the other end is hooked. This end is great for getting into your jars and removing any paste from the edges and mixing it up. I love du dual purpose tools. And because it has this nice little mini squeegee on it, or mini mini squeegee, I can get into tight areas with my paste without covering up things I don't intend to. I need to get that little bicycle seat and my basket. I've got a little bit too much paste here. I'm trying to get the handlebars. Hopefully I've got it there okay. My wheel. Oops, I've got a little bit too much paste. Let me kind of clean this up a little bit. Get rid of my lines. Take the excess paste off. Put it back in the jar. Let me get the rest of it. And then I'm going to do the paste and peel again and look at this bike to make sure that it looks okay. Sometimes I have my detail tool here so that I can grab something from the corner here and get underneath it. Ah, let me, I'll just go from the side. Let's check that bike out. 
Okay, that looks pretty good. All right, so I'm gonna just leave it up for a second and then lay it back down. And now all I have to do is my wording about take the long way home. And this is where the fun comes in. Let me cover this up. I wanna do a blend of different colors and I'm not sure if I'm gonna come up with what I really want as an end result, but if it isn't quite what I want, I could always go back and alter it. No, no problem, it's easy enough to do it. Hi, Terry, how are you doing? Okay, I'm just cleaning off a squeegee because I dropped my other one on the floor and I need some clean stir sticks. So let's see what we're doing here. I grabbed so many piles, so many jars of paste because I wasn't sure what color that this is kind of embarrassing. They're casting a little bit of shadow over my work surface because I just grabbed jar after jar after jar. Obviously way too much. Okay, this is what I'm going for. I want something I wanted something bright like yellow and I wanted something kind of like um, That would kind of remind me of a melon or a sunset and I think I'm gonna just actually use my shimmer melon and my golden hour paste and Just alternate the two of them for the look that I'm going for I actually considered doing a rainbow there But I realize it's probably too many colors and too small of an area and I was just gonna make things a little crazy, so I'm just gonna do the golden hour and the shimmer melon. So I'm gonna take, stir it up. This is a beautiful, nice, soft consistency. A little dab here, a little dab, a little dab will do you, right? A little dab there, a little dab, a little dab. Oops, maybe a little bit more there. <coughs> I'm sorry, tickle in my throat. And then my Shimmer Melon, which is one of our shimmers, which is very pretty. I think I actually wanted something a little bit more vibrant. Now this paste has gotten hard, a little hard. It's, I've had it around for a while. Let me add a little bit of water to it to thin it down. Again, distilled water, and all I have to do is stir it up until it's the right consistency. If you accidentally spray too much water in your paste, just leave the cap off, stir it up a little bit, let it dry a little. And when you're stirring your paste, never use a wood stick, never use a popsicle stick or anything like that because our chalk paste is made from chalk and um, wood will absorb the water from the paste and make it dry out. So I use one of our little plastic stir sticks. They're economical. I think there's 24 in a package for like $3.99, something like that. So obviously cheap enough. Whoops, got a lot of paste there. And I'm gonna do a little bit of ombre here. Wet my finger, kind of smear these together a little bit and then use the squeegee to push it through the surface. I don't want my finger too wet. I just want barely moist. Okay. Just want a little bit of a blurring here between them. This is going to make the, taking the paste off a little challenging, but I'll try to be careful with this. I can't reuse this. I can't put it back in the jar because it's a mixture of colors. So I'm just wiping it off on, um, actually this is my disinfecting wipe. So let me kind of clean up the excess here.
Yeah, I went a little overboard on the pace. What could I say? Oh, I might be missing a little bit of yellow there. Let me come back. Let's see, make sure I've got all my letters here. I'm in a bit a little bit spotty on this. I might have wanted to go with a little bit larger of areas of color. I don't know. We'll see what it looks like. Okay. Time to peel and reveal. Oops. I see here that I'm missing part of that E. I didn't get paste all the way to the end. My bad. Okay, that looks better. Uh, it got a little muddy. The melon made it a little muddy looking, um, which I was actually hoping for more of a, a pretty melon. But the shimmer is there, so I wonder when this dries if it'll have more of the look that I like. I'm thinking about it. Hmm. I'm going to set this aside to dry and clean my transfer at my table while that dries and think about if I want to change anything with it. I'm wetting the back of the transfer with water. Our transfers will not stick to our mat, but sometimes I use a glass mat and I'm just always in the habit of wetting it. Just in case, I wouldn't want to use my glass mat and set it down without wetting it. Then I'm going to grab my board eraser again and use it to actually clean my transfer. It does a really nice job of removing the paste. And you could actually use your board eraser at the sink too. You could use your fingers to kind of rub the paste off while you have it running under water or if you put it in a water bath. Or just put it on the bottom of the sink, you know, let the adhesive get wet first. And then you use your board eraser on it while it's on the bottom of the sink. All of them work fine. And it's not as messy as it, me doing it on my surface here. But pretend this is a sink and this is pretty much what I'd be doing other, other than there'd be water running here. I'm going to take a disinfecting wipe. And clean the rest of the paste off of that. Hey, Deb. So you just like it, huh? I'm, I'm sitting on the fence. We'll see what it looks like when it's dried. It might need just a little boost somewhere. And if so, I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that, to just add it. So obviously I didn't get enough of the paste off with my board eraser, so let me do a little bit more cleanup here. Like I said, much easier under running water at a sink. By using the board eraser, though, on your transfers to get off the paste, if you're using a highly pigmented paste, it could, like a red or a black, it could actually stain the teal part of your transfer, but that doesn't hurt it at all. It doesn't affect the usability. It just doesn't look as pristine as it did before you used it. So the board eraser diminishes the staining. So you can see I've got some staining here from the blue. So it does help with the app, but it doesn't necessarily get all of it because the pigment just seeps into the to the vinyl. Okay, let me clean the other side of this. Whoops. And then I'll show you a trick to speed drying. And then we'll take another look at that project. My newsletter is not up yet and running, but Chalk Couture is coming out with a newsletter, and there's, um, I'll put the link, oh, you know what, I'll do a post in the morning, or maybe I'll do it tonight, with the link to sign up for their newsletter, they're actually having drawings um, for $100 shopping sprees, and they will be sending out, um, I think the idea is uh, a newsletter once a month, 
with techniques and different ideas and things in there. Nothing really salesy. It's supposed to be more focused on um, product use and techniques. So I would say sign up for their newsletter. Sign up for mine, too. Mine is going to be a recap of um, my projects from the previous week and maybe a little bit more details on them and things like that. So we're going to take we're taking a little bit different of a spin or approach on our newsletters. Oh, and ooh, 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 ooh. Club Couture, 1999. It's a subscription package, 1999 a month. Shipping's on us, so it's 19.99 plus tax in the U.S. Comes with an eight and a half by eleven inch transfer and three individual paste packets. Give yourself the joy of an hour of creative bliss every month. It comes right to your door. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to do anything. And you just set the time aside for yourself to have a little bit of creative fun. Club Couture members have privileges. Shipping of the actual membership or subscription is free, but other, por other purchases, any other purchases, are a flat $4.95. No matter what size of the order. And then we do have different perks throughout the year. Well, check out February's perks. You're not going to believe this. Club Couture members get... If there are... I have to think about this for a second. Okay. If you're not a member of Club Couture and you sign up this month, you get your... Of course, you would get this transfer, but... Just for signing up with the three-month minimum, you will get five additional transfers from 2021. Five of the 12 transfers from 2021 will be yours for free just for signing up. That's a $75 value. How cool is that, right? And then, we didn't forget about our existing club members. They deserve to get spoiled a little bit, too. So if you're an existing club member and you make a purchase of $60 on my chalk site, you will get five free transfers from 2020. Obviously, we don't want to give you the same transfers from 2021 because you might very well have already have some of them. So you will get five transfers from 2020. How cool is this? I'm putting this transfer on my fuzzing cloth, adhesive side up, and I'm putting it on the microfiber side. I'm going to fold this cloth over and squeeze out the moisture. This will help my transfer dry quicker, and it actually even makes the adhesive more sticky. So, a good thing to do. And then I'm going to set this aside to dry for a few moments and take another look. I just got a big piece of fuzz on the back. And take another look at that project and see if I want to alter it in any way. But can you imagine $75 worth of product for placing a $60 order? If you're an existing member, if you're a new member, $75 of product just for signing up. It's like, can things get any better? I think this is one of the coolest promotions I've ever seen the company have. It's just so exciting and so wonderful. And like I said, the transfers are exclusive to club members and to designers. If you want this transfer, the only way that you can get it is either by becoming a designer or by signing up for Club Couture. And if you think you'd like to do what I do, have some fun being a designer, making a little sign money, having a little side hustle, or just saving money on craft supplies, or basically building your own enterprise, drop me, drop the word team in the comments below, and I will be happy to share a link with you that tells you all about the perks and benefits of being a designer. No obligation video, just watch it in your leisure and see what you think, if it fits your plans. Okay, back to the project, and let's take a peek at it and see what we think. See if it needs a little bit of zhuzh added to it, or if it's fine as it is. Okay, my melon looks a little brown to me. You could see a little bit of the 
the shimmer though came through. Should I leave it like this or do you think I should add a little bit melon and turn this brown more into melon color? What do you think? I need a vote. Okay, I've got two, leave it or like it. What do we think? No, no melon? We have a consensus. Place your vote now. <laughs> Add the melon, put melon or leave it. What do you think? Don't be shy. Well, I guess the consensus is leave it, so that is exactly what I'll do. But look at how simple and easy, in just a little bit over a half hour, I've cleaned my transfer. Okay, yes, I've got to clean my tools, but our chalk paste is water-soluble, so cleanup is really easy. I've got to clean my little board eraser, just rinse it off, and put my mat away, and then I'm done. Can you really get any more simpler than that? If you can butter toast, seriously, you can chalk. If you'd like more information about Club Couture, comment club in the comments. I will put a club down, I will put a, blah, blah, a link down there with more information about my newsletter, about being a designer, club, shopping, whatever. Just click on the link if you need any more information or be, you're more than welcome to PM me or email me right with any questions that you may have. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening. Stay safe and warm, people. See you soon.